before we go to the like a pause, I have a question uh, from Nasta. Um, you mentioned that there are some companies um, that are trying, they're trying to sell hijab, like Nike's, Orleans, and these sort of like uh, companies. They're trying to sell some sort of hijab. Um, the question would be: We have some people in Europe, specifically in Sweden, they see themselves as Muslim. They choose to be Muslims. We also have some converters. They convert to, be, to Islam. So. If someone comes to you and say, like, okay, I, it's my choice to be Muslim, and it's my choice to wear like that, uh, I need these sort of products uh, to help me go exercise or, like, appear in society in the way that I like. So, basically, if you're trying to stop those companies to sell hijab, you, in fact, are ignoring the right of those people to choose the way that they want to live. So, what would you answer be to those people? Yeah. Actually, uh, my answer is that uh, we are not against selling hijab in, uh, uh, for example, stores and by these brands. Uh, I personally believe that normalizing hijab and fetishizing hijab is that what uh, we are against it. Because they try to uh, show pictures from Islamic uh, women who uh, mm, advertise and casting casting hijab and it's the problem I think selling hijab uh, for women who choose mm, this type of clothes uh, uh, and they are they are Muslim and want to uh, I mean uh, wear hijab but uh, it's not the problem, and uh, they have to be free to uh, buy it from stores, but normalizing it and fetishizing it, like uh, brands such as Dolce & Gabbana and uh, <coughs> other brands that uh, want to normalize these kinds of uh, hijab, uh, should be banned, I think. So you don't think that like banning this sort of clothing is actually ignoring the right of people to um, choose the way that they want? I don't know. Mm -hmm. English, English. Okay. If you like English, yeah. English would be better. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, you cannot. There's a fashion business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're making this fashion, but I can tell you something else. I don't know how many has been thinking about that. Mm -hmm. But you, if you look at the girls, the women, they're carrying very short pants, Islamistic pants. Have you seen that? And they're just flying around and they have these socks. I would say it is influenced because they're not stupid. What do you think all these Saudi people are doing? They're businessmen, they're money. They make that. That's how you do it. I'm old enough to be living in the Cold War. I know exactly what they were doing. I lived on the other side of the wall as well. I know exactly how you make business about this, how you make propaganda. You put it in clothes, you put little colors of American flag or something like that. You do this. Now this is an Islamistic fashion. And it got billions of money behind it. Swallow it, swallow it. People are foolish, let them be foolish. Only I'm saying adult people do what they want, but they take the consequences. I'm not going to hire somebody who shows that is an independent person. Somebody I wouldn't trust. I'm not going to hire such a person. But so let me give you something. Like, we live in a capitalistic world anyway. They make money out of everything. Yeah, so sure. what's the problem with the Islamic fashion then? You yeah. have like some no, other no, no, fashion. No. Yeah, it is. It is. The, there's no problem. You cannot stop that. Go on. Go on. But be aware about it. Understand it is propaganda. Understand it's a political aim. You know, that's the point. Understand it because if you, they're very nice and these beautiful ladies and women with all these nice shawls and so on. Of course, they're very sexy and nice, but in the Quran it says just cover your breast, not your hair. Remember that. And that's the point. Do, that is what it's doing. But the point is, if you swallow this, if you accept this uncritically, then you swallow the propaganda. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And I don't trust a woman in Sweden if she has three PhDs and she puts her shawl around her head, I'm not going to trust her. She's an unindependent person. Yeah. That's all. We are older than the No, we can have a pause then, and then after pause, if you have any questions, we can finish it. If you have any questions.
Ja, eh, jag tänkte väl innan vi går det. Det är okay. viktigt. Fem minuter till så kan vi... Den frågan går till nästa... nästa där. Eh, jag, för, jag ställer min fråga på svenska. Ifall du har det så kan Mila översätta på engelska också. Eh, det vi har talat om hittills har det varit grunden. Varför hijab finns det? Den filosofiska grunden. Alltså historien om hijab. Så här. Men nu, när, vi har, när vi talar om den politiska verktygen, hijab är en politisk verktyg som används runt om världen. Du talar om precis på engelska också, du, Rebecka. Eh, då kommer jag till den här frågan nu. Hijab finns i olika länder nu, som Iran. Eh, de senaste åren som, som ni har sett, det har hänt väldigt mycket i Iran. Eh, den revolutionära eh, tjejer, kvinnor, den revolutionära kvinnorna som har ställt upp med hijab. De har protesterat på väldigt, väldigt många olika sätt och det, det har kommit på media, sociala medier. Eh, nu min fråga är, eh, hur ska man kunna bekämpa den politiska islam som eh, har pågått i många år, speciellt de senaste åren som har grundats i Iran nästan? Den frågan är på svenska, det är bara för att alla som sitter här kan förstå det, men vidare kan vi också... Mm. Uh. How are you supposed to fight against political Islam since we have like a business Med tanke, med tanke det som har hänt de senaste åren, mm. uh, med uh, det, det som hände, uh, precis, doktoran är en relav eller uh, den revolutionary women in Iran who have been able to do it. As I said before, um, there are millions of women uh, who fight against hijab in, under oppression of uh, political Islam. In uh, Iran, for example, we have a uh, uh, fight from uh, uh, after uh, revolution, Islamic revolution, and uh, it is continues uh, until right now. And uh, by uh, celebrating these days and by uh, uh, normalizing hijab in European countries, these women are ignored, and that's why we have to fight against these days in European countries. That's why these days are important for us because millions of women fight against hijab in their countries in their, because they are not agree with these political Islam and their rules. They, they limit and they uh, have to protect always their hair and bodies, uh, from when they, uh, even they are child, because uh, I, I live in Iran uh, before I migrate to Sweden, and uh, uh, wearing hijab is an obligation there. Uh, so it's not women's choice. Uh, by uh, celebrating these days <coughs> in European countries, we ignore these women who fight against hijab, and there are millions of thousands of videos and pictures of women from Iran that shows women fight against hijab. Yeah. Okay, um, we have a question over there. there we go. Yeah, uh, Rebecca, I didn't understand the part she talks Swedish. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. But you said in Quran we have nothing about hijab, yeah? So you cover your breast, not, not your hair. In in Surah Nur, verdict 31, it says you should cover the whole body from the people you don't know. It says in the Bible too. Okay. And today in Iran, they were celebra celebrating in Engelab Square, Engelab girls, they were all wearing hijab and robbing the name today, exactly today. Can I ask you, do you see this as a weapon to, for, for oppression, for the yeah, reactionary yeah. politics? 
Exactly, because Islam is politics. Yes. You can never say Islam Islam has two different faces, no. political and personal. No. Islam is political because there is one reason. They have something they call it Amr ve Maruf Nahi az Munkar. Mm. How do you translate that? <laughs> mm, moral, moral laws like yes, moral laws. Okay, so with that uh, sentence mm -hmm. and considering Prophet Muhammad himself, he was the leader, then come to Shias or Sunnis, Khalifa or Imams, all of them govern. So it is political. Islam is dangerous, no matter where it is. Hijab is just one symbol. No one chooses hijab by him, her, herself. If a girl chooses hijab, it goes back to the, uh, to the childhood that his father said, you must wear hijab. And he heard that and heard that and heard that. And then it, it became the queen for her. So hijab is just violating women's rights. And it's not just hijab. It has so many consequences. Hijab is just one thing we can see. When someone wears hijab, she cannot shake hands. When someone wears hijab, if she goes to the hospital, she does not want any man to touch her. So this is just the surface. Plus, they come to countries like Sweden, like Germany, like England, like America, like Canada. They ran away from Islamic countries. They come to these countries and they say, we are Muslims and we keep Islam for ourselves. But when they say to their family, when they say to their wives, to their children, to their daughters, you must wear hijab because I am Muslim. This is exactly the Islam we are talking. Islam can never be personal. And when they come by hijab to the streets, it makes me feel threatened. It makes me feel threatened, although I was born in an Islamic society. If you want, threatened. Yeah. But I feel threatened because I don't want my child to be born with these foolish thoughts and ideas of Islamic uh, thoughts. And we don't know, so we let them go. So they are in the in the suburbs and teaching, telling the girls and telling the women to correct them how they should dress themselves. Sorry, the but they don't, they don't understand that, Rebecca, mm -hmm. because they say, Allah Ta'ala said that. Yes, yes, but course. to be honest, there is no Allah. There is no God. Okay? But I don't Muhammad, find anybody Muhammad said something. Okay. And, okay, there are two stories be behind hijab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ibn Khaldun uh, says, we must have a just, just a minute, just a minute. Ibn Khaldun says, because mm -hmm. Ayesha mm -hmm. was very beautiful, so Muhammad says, It was nine years. <laughs> Muhammad pedophile. <laughs> so you must, wear, uh, you, mm -hmm. you must wear hijab so no one can see you. Mm -hmm. And al waqidi says, mm -hmm. because Muhammad had too many wives, almost 180 something, no. <laughs> they were prostitutes. And then Muhammad said they must wear hijab so that no one understands they are hiring Prophet's wife. So. Uh, I forgot what I was saying. We know. Att tala om den grundläggande koranen, det är väldigt, väldigt intressant att tala om det så att man kan, eftersom man har en seminarium, och tiden är väldigt begränsad. Våra representanter här har mellan fem och sju minuter, tyvärr, så måste vi avbryta det.